Hey, what's up guys? Uh, finally have a new knife review, as promised. I know it's been a while now, but uh, here it is. And this one is on an Emerson, which is going to make a lot of people happy, because I have yet to have, uh, have shown an Emerson on my channel. Um, it's not that I don't like Emerson, it's just I haven't had one in years. Uh, I've only owned two Emerson models before. I had a Commander and a Mini Commander. And uh, I shied away from them for a while because I, I wasn't too fond of the uh, chisel ground blades. Um, but, you know, I've grown to like it. I've grown to accept it. It's not my top preferred uh, blade grind, but um, it's certainly effective. And when sharp, it does its job. Nothing wrong with it at all. Um, but anyway, this one here is the Emerson CQC7 BWSF. Huh? What do you say? Don't worry. I'm going to break it down let you know what all those characters mean. But um, basically, this is an oldie, an old design. A uh, quick little history lesson. Let me I'll display the knife while I tell you some history on this, uh, this model. Well, first off, let me, let me talk a little bit of history about Emerson in general. Uh, they've been around a long time. Uh, Ernest Emerson is the uh, creator, co-founder, or not co-founder, the, the only founder <laughs> of Emerson Knives. Um, very interesting man. Uh, if you don't know about Ernest Emerson, you know, Google him, Wikipedia, whatever. Um, he's a fascinating uh, life and he has an extensive um, uh, background in martial arts as well as combat training. And uh, he basically started his knife line at a necessity because he, uh, you know, he had some great ideas for, for good combat folders. And uh, there's, look, there's a diehard um, uh, fan base out there on Emerson's. There's a lot of really hardcore Emerson fans. And for good reason. They make really good knives. Um, let me tell you... Well, I was going to go into specs, but I still have a little bit more history I want to tell you about. Um, this specific knife here, the CQC7... And 7 just stands for the model. It's the model number 7. And CQC stands for Close Quarters Combat. Okay. Obviously a combative uh, term. Um, basically a fighting knife. You know, when you're in, in close on someone and, and your guns aren't an option and you have to pull a blade, that's basically what it's for. But um, the CQC7 has a pretty good history. Um, before this knife, there was a CQC6. Now, that was a custom knife from Emerson. Uh, and this was back in 1994. And uh, the president of Benchmade um, contacted Ernest Emerson and said, listen, you know, I really like your knife design. Can we work something out with uh, maybe a collaboration so we can put out a Benchmade model that's very similar? And uh, Ernest uh, kind of decided that the, the CQC6 is, you know, strictly an Emerson thing. And he designed a brand new uh, model specifically for this. And that is what you're looking at right here, the, uh, at the Emerson CQC7. Now, Benchmade did have a version of this for a while. I'm not sure on the Benchmade model number on it, but it was basically this exact same knife. I don't remember if it was waved or not, but I'll talk about the wave feature in a little bit uh, as well. But basically, it was this knife. It was this handle configuration, this design, this uh, chisel ground um, Tonto-style blade here, um, and the thumb disc. Okay, Basically, it's this knife here. So, some people get confused because they see Benchmade. They see this knife with a Benchmade logo on it, and basically, that's what it is. It was, the you know, from 94 to... I don't know when they stopped production on it. I would assume just a couple of years. Um, or maybe not even that long. Maybe it was a year or two. But, um, yeah, some of these knives have a Benchmade logo on it. Those are basically Benchmade uh, came to an agreement with Emerson to, uh, to put out this type knife. And uh, this, well, that's where I actually first saw Emerson knives is through Benchmade. Uh, and I actually owned that Benchmade version of the, um, the CQC7 uh, years and years ago. Now, I didn't get it when it was first brand new. I got it later uh, after it's been discontinued. But... Um, it was a very fascinating knife, and that's what actually turned me on to Benchmade's, or excuse me, turned me on to, uh, to Emerson's. And at that point, I wanted a, a real Emerson, and at the time, I ended up picking up a, um, a Commander. I liked it a lot. I thought it was a little bit big for my needs, so I ended up getting a Mini Commander as well. And both knives uh, treated me great. You know, I, I eventually sold them, and, or traded them, and of course, I do regret it. I wish I still had them, but fantastic knives. Like I said, um, there is a big following with them. Uh, Emerson's are used in, you know, lots of novels. Um, uh, Navy SEALs uh, use these knives as well as a lot of different branches of the military. They are hardcore, hard-use tactical folders. Um, Emerson knives have been into space. They, they've uh, entered into the space program at one point. Um, you know, so there's a lot of fame behind them for that. I mean, you see them in movies occasionally as well. So the name is definitely out there. But um, before I talk about this knife specifically, there's one more thing I wanted to say that I thought that was kind of cool. I did some more research on uh, Ernest Emerson, and uh, I don't know if it's his very first knife he ever made, but it was a fascinating little story. Basically, when he got into martial arts and he started studying the, uh, the Filipino uh, martial arts style, 
Um, and the Filipinos are known for their uh, their battle songs and their barong uh, for, for edged weapons. And, uh, you know, at the time he was 23 years old, back in the day, I think early 70s, and, uh, you know, he needed a battle song for his study, and he couldn't afford to get one, so he just made one. <laughs> and it's a real fascinating story, and, uh, you know, I, I think he even, uh, he treated it on his dining room table with a blowtorch. <laughs> But he kind of looked at it and said to himself, you know what, I bet I can make one of those. It's not that, not that hard. And he did. And I actually found that picture of that, his, his battle song model. So I want to show you that real quick. Even though it's not related to this, I thought it was pretty fascinating. So here, check out that picture. Uh, Ernest Emerson's first battle song, custom battle song. So there it was. Pretty, uh, pretty simple design, but effective and uh, amazing for someone who uh, you know, has little to no... Um, knife making, you know, history. So anyway, I just wanted to share that real quick with you. But anyway, this review is on this specific knife, so uh, let's talk about it. First, let me get some specs out of the way for anyone who's interested in that kind of stuff. Um, the handle, uh, the knife closed, uh, closed position is 4.65 inches long. Um, there is a 3.3 inch blade. It is 154 cm stainless steel. Um, and the overall length here is uh, just, I think, just under 8 inches. Um, overall, um, uh, weight on this is four ounces. All right. In my hand, you can see it's. I would definitely classify as medium, possibly large fixed blade. Probably more on the medium size. There is enough handle for me to definitely grip onto and hold. It's very comfortable. Um, so as far as size, it's a very good uh, utility knife, as well as you know, in in a certain situation, a defensive blade. So uh, what else? The, um, the like I said, the blade is 154 cm stainless steel. I've talked to that you know a lot in the past. It's a Preferred steel by many. I love it. I think it's a great steel. Uh, now, as I said, this is a chisel ground blade. If you're not familiar with that, you can see it. If I give you an aerial or top view, basically the right side of the blade is literally just completely flat. There's no grinds at all. Now, on the, on the flip side or front side of the knife, if you're righty anyway, um, you have your, your uh, Tanto or Tanto style blade, okay, which gives you that secondary point, which is actually really good. It bites into, uh, like, if you're opening packages and stuff. So it actually does, if, it, if your knife is sharp, um, it is a very effective design. But of course, the Tanto or Tanto style blade um, is known for its strength for penetration. Okay, because you do have a nice wide tip on there, you're not going to have it snap off easily. And it is really great for, for stabbing. Now, I don't have a, a huge need for stabbing. In fact, I probably only stab something um, that's actually utility work. I'm not talking about just fun. I know occasionally us knife guys just like to stab stuff just because it's fun. But where I actually need to, like to get into a can or something, it's rare, maybe t twice a year, if that, you know. It's not something I do pretty much ever. Um, but anyway, it's good to know that you do have a nice strong tip if you need to penetrate into something. Um, now you do have the, uh, the first grind, which comes about, I don't know, about 50% down the blade from the spine. It comes down, then you have the secondary uh, bevel or edge, which changes angles. Um, this knife did come, uh, I got it used actually from one of my viewers. Um, and it did come nice and sharp, but I touched it up a little bit, I stropped it. Chisel ground blades I find to be a little bit difficult to sharpen. Now, theoretically you would think, alright, well you're only sharpening one side, how difficult can that be? It's half the work as a regular knife. Well, the problem is that once you get that, the sharpening done on the one side, you do have to come back to the other side and just barely touch it. You gotta just, you know, I usually just strop it, I don't even sharpen the other side, but you know, if you get your angle wrong because you're doing it by hand, um, you know, you can just dull that edge, just roll it right over. Um, even with the strop, I've, I've had a little bit of problems in the, you know, in the past uh, with chisel ground blades. But, you know, it's not, it's like anything else, you know, you practice, you know what you're doing. You do it the right way, it's not going to be a problem. Um, for an amateur sharpener, it, it might be an issue. It might be something you struggle with just a little. But, you know, it, it gets, it's a, you know, uh, it might be an issue for some people, it might not. It's <laughs> just something I thought I'd mention. Um, but it literally is half the sharpening, so I guess it doesn't take too long to, uh, to touch up. 154 cm helps because it's not terribly difficult to, sh to resharpen, uh, say, a chisel ground blade in S30V or, you know, um, I don't know, detail or something that's a little bit harder. Maybe. Maybe it might be uh, an issue. But I don't think it's an issue with this knife. Now, let me break down the, um, the actual characters. Like I said, this is a model CQC7BWSF, and that's a mouthful. So, I already told you CQC7. Uh, stands for Close Quarters Combat uh, Model 7, okay, which represents the, um, the, the style of handle, pretty much, um, and, the, and the blade length. Now, the B represents its a Tonto shape, 
uh, blade. They also make this in like a drop point um, as well. So that the B, I don't know why they picked B. I guess just part of their, their coding system. But the B represents Tanto or Tanto style blade. The W stands for waved. Okay, they have this knife that's not waved. Some people don't like the wave feature. I happen to love it. I'm going to make a separate video on how the wave feature works in case you're not familiar with it. Okay, it'll probably be soon after this video. Um, but it does have the wave feature, so that's what the W stands for. And then SF stands for uh, satin finish, and that is a satin finish blade. Okay, uh, this does come in black. It does come in uh, partially serrated or combo edge, if you like that. I do prefer the plain edge, um, just ease of sharpening. But the satin finish, you know, it's real hard to, um, maybe if I get close, it's going to be really hard to, uh, to explain what this looks like. You can see kind of the texture on it. It almost looks, um, you know, it's real hard to explain. It's like, it's not quite the same finish as bead blasting, but it's close to bead blasting. Um, of course, every different knife company is going to have a different version of their, let's say, satin finish blade. You know, you can get a, a knife from Benchmade that's satin finish, and it looks totally different than this. So everyone has their own interpretation and own finish jobs. Um, but it's definitely unique. It's nothing that I've seen before. Uh, but I like it. You know, it's just a, it's a matte gray. It's real simple. Uh, it doesn't show scratches, you know, too badly. Um, there is some um, use on this knife, but, you know, it gives a character, which I like quite a bit. But um, anyway, that's the uh, what the SF stands for, satin finish. Uh, overall, it's a pretty basic design. You do have a little curvature in the handle here, which helps with your uh, uh, pinky and ring finger that comes in. Um... With that wave feature, you do get a nice little thumb ramp on there. As far as jimping on this one, um, the jimping on the liners is really, really sharp, but it's recessed a little bit, so it's kind of hard to get to. And the jimping on the back here, um, it's there. It's not super effective, but you know what? With this design of the wave uh, ramping up, it really helps your thumb. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. And even, I've talked about this in, in past reviews, I don't think jimping on the back is terribly um, important. Uh, it's not it's not the most important thing anyway for utility work in that okay let's say this is totally slick you know you put um, I don't know let's say it's, there's grease all over it you know or if you have your hands are wet or whatever if you have a proper grip I would for most hard cutting I would definitely use a natural grip like this with your thumb tucked down okay this is where you could have the most strength um, but if you happen to put your thumb up here and you slip off I mean where's it gonna go it's not you're not gonna cut yourself it's no big deal so it's not a huge issue for me but one thing I did want to talk about is this thumb disc. Not everyone is a fan of the thumb disc. Okay, some people like thumb studs. Uh, I don't find it to be a problem. I can uh, flick the knife out pretty easily. I can also manipulate it slowly if I want to. Okay, same thing with uh, the closing. It's not hard to use. Some people just don't like it. Um, it's definitely different. If you use the thumb studs, it's just something you have to get used to. If you're used to an opening hole, like say on a Spyderco, Again, something you just have to get used to. It's like anything else, you know. Either you're gonna like it or you're not gonna like it. Um, I don't have a, a huge preference for it or without it. Now you saw there, I tried to flick it open, and it, it kind of skipped off a little bit. There is good uh, knurling on it or texturing. You can get a grip of it, you know, good um, good texture on the top there. But um, as you saw there, you know, you can slip off on it, so it's not always the most effective. But because this is a wave knife, if I'm going to use this knife, as I take it out of my pocket, I catch that wave feature and lock it straight open. So I don't even use the thumb disc, to be honest. I mean, since I've been carrying it for the last couple of weeks now, um, I haven't used it. I, no, that's not true. I used it once because I was in um, a Mr. Z's, which is a food store, and uh, I had a bag of, uh, I was buying lettuce, and uh, it got caught on the, on the side of the, uh, the, the front of the vegetable thing, and it got like... It, I don't know how it happened, but the bag kind of ripped and it wrapped around this uh, the corner of the metal. So I just took my knife out quickly, just cut it off, and I got a new bag. But I figured because there's these old ladies standing around me, I didn't want to just whip the thing out. It's a big old snap, and everyone's going to look like, oh, what's that guy doing? Um, so I did just take it out of my pocket and just slowly just opened it up. No big deal. Made my cut, put it back in the pocket, and that was the end of the story. Um, so I have to say, as far as the uh, thumb disc goes, it's functional. Not my favorite, but it, it definitely works. There's nothing wrong with it. It is nice and strong. It doesn't wiggle or anything. Um, there's a screw that literally goes into the stock of the blade there that keeps it on. Another thing about the uh, hardware on this, on Emerson's, some people may think this is kind of cheap, um, and other people just see it as a huge convenience. All their hardware is very simple Phillips or flathead screws. Okay, their pivot screw is a flathead screw. You don't need special tools. You don't need like a spanner tool uh, like you would on a, a Strider, you know, or, um, I don't know, the... 
some other knives. They just have funky um, tools that you need. I mean, even even Torx, you know. Not everyone has a Torx set. Especially if you're getting into knives for the first time, you probably don't have a Torx set. Unless you happen to have a, a big array of tools in your house already. It just makes it simple. You know, flathead screwdriver. Everyone has that. Even if you don't, you can use a corner of a credit card to open that, you know, if it wasn't too tight. Their body screws, Phillips head. You know, how simple does it get? If I can find it, there we go. Right? Everyone has a Phillips head screwdriver. If you don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you should. You should at least have a Phillips head screwdriver. <laughs> if that's your only, if you have to pick three tools to have in your house, um, hammer, Phillips head, flathead. All right? Oh, actually, pick four. You should get a pair of pliers, too. <laughs> but uh, it's just simple stuff. It's, it's very simple, and I do appreciate that. Same thing with the screws to the pocket clip. They are also uh, uh, Phillips head. So very simple there. Um, there is a lanyard hole here. It is a decent-sized lanyard hole. It will accommodate 550, um, gutted or not gutted. Okay, if you like the, you know, with the keeping the inner cord in it, that's not a problem. Uh, just large enough to accommodate that. Um, real quick, there are titanium. It is a titanium liner. On the at least I know on the one side I think the opposite side is stainless steel. Let's take a close look at it. The liner on top I believe is stainless, but the liner on the bottom that actually turns into your lock is in fact titanium for strength. If I can focus in there, you can see the lockup is great on this one. Uh, some people complain about Emerson's; they have a problem with the lockup. Sometimes it's a little bit too early like this, and it just barely locks. Um, and sometimes, for the most part, that's the problem. Sometimes it goes too far in and it gets kind of caught on it. Um, this one, maybe it's just perfectly broken in. or I don't know what the deal is, but it, it's just perfect. Now, when I owned my commanders, um, my large commander, my full size, uh, locked up great. My mini commander had a problem. I had to send it back at the time because the lock wasn't engaging enough. It was barely touching that, um, the, you know, the tang of the blade. And it would, uh, sometimes it would unlock. But I sent it back to Emerson. They have a very good customer service, uh, um, department or team, whatever, and uh, they took care of me. You know, they fixed it for me. But um, you know, some people do have that issue. Uh, if a, you know, if a knife company, if they have a good uh, warranty service and all that kind of stuff, it shouldn't be an issue. You don't expect to get a new knife and then have a problem with it right away. But I have to say, as long as they fix it, I don't, I can't fault them for it. You know, things happen. Um, but this one happens to lock up perfectly. Um, tiny, tiny bit of side to side wiggle on this, but that could be adjusted by the pivot. I happen to like that just because the blade comes out nice and easy. Um, nothing, nothing up and down at all. And that's what's important. You don't want it to move up and down. If it moves side to side, you could probably adjust it in most cases. But if it moves up and down, your lock's not lined up properly and you got to send it back. So, anyway, lockup is great on this knife. Um, the, t the handle is a textured G10. What I like about Emerson, too, is they keep it very simple. Let me get rid of that little piece of dust freaking me out. <laughs> you can see the texturing on there. Very fine texturing makes for a um, like a very fine sandpaper type feel. It's it's kind of grippy, but it's not it's not super grippy. It's not going to uh, irritate your hand no matter how hard you rub it. But you do feel a little bit of uh, grip there. Uh, to be honest, I never held this knife wet or you know with um, you know wet hands or anything like that. I don't know if it'd be that effective if your hands were greasy or, or slimy or anything. Um, but you know, regular use with dry hands, it works fine. It gives you enough grip. But like I was saying, it, they keep it very simple. The hardware is simple. The design's very simple. It's just a, you know, an open, uh, open style handle here. Well, not completely open. You do have a backspacer, which I believe is Zytel. You can see, so it's not a fully open design here, but um, you know, just a real simple knife, but effective. You know, top quality materials used. Um, fit and finish is very good on this. The hardware is nice and flush. There's no, no real um, issues at all. There's no gaps in between the liners and the the scales. Uh, pocket clip is great. I have to say, this is um, one of my. It's such a simple thing, but this pocket clip is perfect. It has the perfect tension. I can sl slide it on my pocket with ease. I don't have to struggle. Okay, putting it on my pocket to clip it, but it's holding it enough where it's not. It's not hard to you know take it out of the pocket. You know, it's such a simple thing, but the the right tension on a pocket clip makes the world of a difference. If you struggle taking your knife on or off your pocket, it, it's a downer. You know, it, it's just, it's a bummer, you know, and you're probably not going to carry it because of that. So, pocket clip is uh, pretty neat on this one. So, I think that's pretty much it. Um, it is nice and sharp. Uh, I have kind of ut uh, of a utility type edge on here. If you give me a second, I'm not really prepared for this, but let me grab something to cut for you. 
Of course, everyone wants to see you cut stuff. I'll tell you what, I have uh, an empty MRE bag. I'll cut that because that's pretty thick plastic. Um, let's see what else I have here. I have a couple. Let's see. I ran out of uh, computer paper, but I have that uh, that thick strapping that I have from work. So, you know, plastic strap. So we'll do a little bit of cutting for you real quick here. You can say it's nice and sharp. I mean, you know, this might get old for some, but some people still like seeing seeing knives in action. All right, that's the main purpose of it. Is it sharp? Yes, it's sharp. I'll try to cut cut like this on the table. Say nice and sharp. If I can angle it right. See when I do that. I start cutting into it, it flexes and then it cuts sideways. But anyway, as you can see, it is it is sharp. It's a sharp knife, and even that tip's sharp. Let's try the uh, the bag here. See there, nice and sharp. So you get the idea. It's a sharp knife, not razor razor sharp. I don't know if it would if it would slice through paper at this point. Um, you can see, I like doing this sometimes too, although it's not that great for your nail, but you can see there, just shaving some enamel. The fingernail test. So, that works. It's a sharp knife, you get the point. But, uh, definitely one of my favorites. It's, uh, I'm happy to finally be able to show you an Emerson. Like I said, some people said, you know, what's the deal? You don't like Emerson's? I've owned so many knives that I just haven't shown because I own them and got rid of them way before I even knew what YouTube was, you know. So there's a lot of stuff I love to show that I used to own. I just don't own it anymore. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, one more thing I want to talk about with this knife that I like quite a bit. That I guess I used to be a huge microhol uh, microholic. I used to be a huge uh, Microtech fan. I'm, th I'm saying microholic because I used to belong to that forum, microholics.org. Um, if you're into Microtechs, you got to check out that forum. But uh, what I liked about Microtex is they always dated their knives, uh, just like kind of like Kershaw does um, on some of their knives. But let me show you the uh, the markings here. See, there's the Emerson logo, USA, which a lot of people will like. Uh, 2008 is when this one was made. Over here they have the Wave Feature patent number, and on the left side they have their model number, CQC 7BW, and made in USA. Now on the reverse side. There's no marking, but there is a marking underneath the thumb disc, 1516. Um, don't know what that is offhand. If I had to guess, I would say probably a production number, perhaps the 1500th, you know, or, you know, 1516th knife made in 2008 for this model. You know, who knows? Uh, if I had, that's probably my best guess for that. But anyway, it, yeah, oh, made in USA. That's another thing that some people are going to really appreciate. So... I think I said pretty much everything I had to say about the knife. It's a fantastic knife. It's extremely fast. It's very, you know, hard use blade. Um, it's cool. If you like it, check it out. There's a lot of Emersons. A lot of Emerson uh, new models that I like. I love the Spec War models. Um, I like the A100. There's, you know, you may see more Emersons in the future. I might just have to buy a new one because I, I kind of rekindled my love for, uh, for Emerson blades. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, sorry if it was a little bit long, but, you know, I like to get into detail and, uh, you know, give all my thoughts on stuff. So, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.